What's on my plate? This morning, while having breakfast, Jack is suddenly intrigued by the nutritional information and ingredients written on the side of his cereal box. But what is really inside food, and what do we eat exactly? Well, Jack, why don't we explore this question together? Let's start from the beginning. Once food is chewed and swallowed, it goes on a real journey inside the digestive tract. Then, food meets some particular organic substances called enzymes. Like small molecular scissors, these enzymes cut the molecules contained in food into smaller molecules. These smaller molecules are absorbed into the intestine and enter the bloodstream. They are then directed to the tissues to be used directly, or to specific reserves for storage. Among the components of food, we usually distinguish between macro and micronutrients, and each has its own function. Macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and water. Carbohydrates are simple carbohydrates or sugars, such as glucose or fructose. And complex carbohydrates such as starch, their main role is to provide energy. Proteins, which are composed of amino acids, provide, among other things, building elements for tissue growth and repair. Lipids are fats; they help provide structure to cell membranes and are involved in hormonal synthesis and also provide energy. Finally, did you know that some fruits? Such as watermelon are ninety percent water. There is a significant amount of water present in food, and it has numerous physiological roles, such as transportation and excretion of molecules, chemical reactions, or thermal regulation. Food is also composed of micronutrients, minerals, and vitamins. Among the minerals, iron, for example, is involved in oxygen transport in the blood. While potassium contributes to the transmission of nerve messages, among the vitamins, vitamin A is important for vision and immune defences, while vitamin D is involved in bone building. Did you know we need different amounts of all these nutrients depending on our age, our gender, and our physical activity? But that's not all. E one o one, E two o two, lecithin. You've probably already encountered these mysterious names on your food labels, but what are they doing in our food? These are food additives. These substances are intentionally added to foods to give them colour, change their texture, enhance their taste, or for conservation. So these additives are used for technological, not nutritional, purposes. They can be obtained from natural compounds, or they can be synthesised chemically. In many countries, before they can be used, additives are evaluated by food safety authorities. So there you have it, Jack. The mystery of the cereal box is solved. Food is mainly composed of many nutrients that provide the different elements and the energy our bodies need to function. Sometimes, technological additives can also be added. In any case, all foods have a different nutritional composition. So diversifying and balancing our diet. Is key.